Is it just me, or are tax forms super complicated? You know, it's like skip line 31C if line 31A is less than the inverse square root of 28G. <laughs> what? Have you heard that? The IRS is considering new, easier to use tax forms. They're going to call them the 1040 extra easy form. It's going to be great. Just one page. You want to see it? Here it is. <laughs> Line one, how much did you make? Line two, send it to us. Come to think of it, that's not all that big of a change. Well, knowing Jesus, we're teaching through the Gospel of Luke, and today we're going to get to the fourth passage found in chapter 5. We pick it up where it begins. It's chapter 27, or verse 27 says, After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Right out of the gates, Levi, this guy was a tax collector. And in the days of Jesus, well, taxation was quite simple. The Roman government, they awarded the job to the highest bidder. They didn't pay a salary to the tax collector. Rather, the tax collector owed Rome the amount of their bid and got to keep everything that they collected above that bid. So the more that they could get, the more that they could keep. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew the way that the taxation system worked. He knew that this guy, Levi, was putting money over people. And Jesus, he knew that this guy, Levi, was compromising his integrity for his fortune. But look what Jesus did. Verse 27, after this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. Follow me. Jesus invites this guy to be his follower. Understand that by this time, in chapter 5, Jesus, he had turned into a bit of a rock star. He was drawing huge crowds. Jesus, he could have picked about anyone that he wanted. Who'd he pick? Levi, the narcissistic tax collector. You know, sometimes... Religious people think something like, Man, God picked me. I must be special. Well, you're special, but maybe not in the way that you're thinking. What Jesus tends to do, he tends to pick the nobodies and love them and build into them. Yeah, that's my story. Yeah, no first round draft pick here. No Rhodes Scholar here. And maybe that's part of your story. See what our God does. He sees beyond who we are. He sees who we can be. He sees that all people are created in the image of God. None are beyond hope. None are without value. I mean, look at this passage. Look at Levi. He was a tax collector, despised. This is one of the important things Jesus is teaching us in this passage. No matter how raw, no matter how rough, no matter how unworthy you think you are, Jesus, he still cares and he invites you. That's the way he works. That's why he came. That's who our God is. Isn't that great? That's one of the reasons why we gather and we worship him. Well, it continues, verse 27 and 28, follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Do you notice how that worked? It's really kind of interesting when you look at this. Levi, where was he? Did you notice Levi? He wasn't out looking for God. Levi didn't come to Jesus. It was the reverse of that. Jesus went to Levi. We think that that's pretty important at the Ridge, and this is one of those ways that we're maybe a little bit unique. We recognize we aren't the ones who come to God. He's the one who comes to us. That's Christmas. That's the incarnation. That's God saying, hey, you don't have to come to me. I'll come to you. I'll speak your language. I'll eat your food. I'll wear your clothes. Jesus came. He himself didn't sin, but he loves those 
who, who do, and he takes the initiatives to meet them where they are. He builds connections with, with people who aren't connected to God, and, and then he gives them the power to do life in a new way. And that, that drives our philosophy of ministry as a church. This community needs to hear the message of Jesus in a language that it understands. And through the years, that language, it changes. 25 years ago, we started doing things a little different than we are today. Right? Today, we use lights and guitars and keys because that's the musical language of our culture. Today, we have divorce care. We have support groups to meet people in places of need. Do you know that 60% of people in our community don't have a church home? Being a missionary, it isn't just going across the world. Being a missionary can be, it can be just walking across the street. Is that part of your identity as a follower of Jesus? Is there anyone that you're praying for? Is there anyone that you're building a relationship with? Luke chapter 5, Jesus took the initiative. He went to Levi and he invited him. So, how did Levi respond? Verse 28, Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. You know, we often refer to ourselves as followers of Jesus. What does that mean? Well, one of the things God's doing here in this passage in Luke chapter 5 is showing us, showing us what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Levi shows us what it looks like to follow Jesus. Uh, let's get at that this way. Does anybody recognize these guys? You may not recognize their faces, but you'll likely recognize their work. That's Stan and Jan Berenstain, the authors of this. Right? The Berenstain Bears. Let's say that I meet Stan Berenstain at the airport. Don't, don't know who he is, though. And as we're having a conversation, he mentions that he knows Stan Berenstain, the author of the Berenstain Bears. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. Uh, how do you know him? He says, well, I know him quite well. I fix breakfast for him every morning. And then I go back uh, home and I tell my family, you won't believe this. You won't believe who I met at the airport. I met Stan Berenstein's personal chef. <laughs> We'd say, that's a miss. Say, Mike, you, you, you're close, but you missed it. Sometimes we do that with Jesus. Look at this. Follow me, Jesus said to him. Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. First thing we see here about following Jesus, Levi encountered, he met Jesus firsthand. Jesus, he has a lot of friends here, but he gives you the opportunity to do more than meet his friends. You can meet him. How? Perhaps you're familiar with the phrase, well, you can have a personal relationship with Jesus. Sounds good, right? We talk about that. We use that language in Christianity. We use that language in the church, but what does that mean? Have a personal relationship with Jesus. I mean, we can't see him. We can't text him. How can we know him personally? That, that's this. One of the primary ways God speaks to us is through the Bible, and I know some of you, you hear that and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 I know, I know where you're going. I've had a bad experience with that. I've tried that. I've tried to read the Bible. Well, let me explain uh, some of the ways that reading the Bible can work. You know, it's not always the same way. There's no merit badge for total number of pages read. Fair? This week, I was reading through the Bible and just doing a little personal devotion. I came across a passage where God protected somebody. There were a lot of things in this passage that I didn't get, that I had questions about, that I didn't understand, but it was a devotional moment. I was taking a little bit of time, so I, I didn't pursue it in depth and do a lot of research. Here's what I did. I, I just said, God, you protected him. Show me some times when you've protected me. Man, it, it was really powerful. Some memories came to my mind where I, God protected me. 
And it filled me with, with gratitude and thanksgiving. And we ended up having a really significant time. And get this, I didn't even finish reading that passage. And I think that's okay. The goal isn't to read a whole bunch of this. The goal is to communicate with God through this. Not just information, but conversation. Use the Bible. Use it as a way to enter into a dialogue, to enter into a conversation with God. Communication, because you know what they say, foundational for all relationships, communication. True with a relationship with God. That's the first thing we see Levi does to follow Jesus. But look what else it means to follow Jesus. Verse 27, follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Jesus went to Levi, met him where he was, but Levi didn't stay there. Following Jesus required Levi to get up and to leave that tax booth. Following Jesus, it often means leaving or giving up some pattern in our life. Levi, in here, he walked away from his corrupt occupation. He walked away from his income stream. He walked away from his lifestyle. How about you? What's your tax booth? God loves you just the way you are. But he doesn't want to leave you that way. He wants your life to be better. Just because you were born with a nasty temper, that doesn't mean you need to die with one. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you recognize, I don't want to keep doing this. I don't want to keep saying this. I don't want to keep thinking this. Something in me is different now. My desires have changed. My heart has changed. My mind has changed. Things can't continue the way that they've been. I trust this Jesus. I want to follow him. If you're still doing life in that booth, you know, we may like him. We may believe in him, but we're not really following him. One more thing that Levi shows us it means to follow Jesus. Next verse, verse 29. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. Levi, he jumps right into community. Meets Jesus, decides to follow Jesus. Then he throws a party, he invites all his friends to his home to meet Jesus. Now, I imagine if we put ourselves in Levi's place, that was probably a little inconvenient. I imagine he had to go and buy some food. He probably had to be okay with the, with the guy who's gonna spill on his carpet. You know, it's great to have a nice house, but what if nobody gets to come over? It's great to have nice furnishings, but what if no one gets to sit in them? You know, our homes are places of hospitality to welcome people and to build relationships. We don't want you to do all your life with God in this building. We want you to open your homes like Levi did to bring people together, to see what God does. You know, many of us aren't big, bold, cold call evangelists, but I think we can all open up our homes, invite a neighbor, feed them, laugh with them, enjoy them, which can break down so many of the stereotypes our culture has of Christianity. Levi, he invited the people that he worked with. How about you? Who can you invite? I encourage you to try that. Try that this summer. Well, verse 29, Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. Some of you, well, you're following Jesus, but if you're honest, you, you can recognize you're not in community with God's people. 
You know, maybe you think of community, you think, yep, I I hear about that, we talk about that lots of times as a church, and think community, it's one of those things in in the Christian life, it's like a bonus. It's something that I can add into my life and into my spirituality when I have space for it, when I have time for it, when things open up for me. Where in the world did we ever get the idea that all we need to do to follow Jesus is have a relationship with Jesus. Good luck finding that in here. I can't. Following Jesus, the image that we get, it's more the image of a child who gets adopted into a family. They need a relationship with their dad and all the other kids in the family. Adoption, it's adoption into a family. Following Jesus is like that. It's having a relationship with Jesus and a relationship with his followers, both. It's designed to be both. You know, if this, I'll I'll just be real blunt with you, if this, if this a worship service, if this is it for you, this is not going to be enough. At some point, you will become disappointed. This will not meet all of your spiritual needs. It's not designed for that. It's not God's plan. Experiencing community, it's deceptively simple. Make it a priority. No other way around that. Make it a priority. Take the initiative, take a step. You know, you, you saw Teresa was up here today. We have a stage host every week, and they share things that are going on. We have opportunities and groups and events and activities and classes. These are all designed underneath them. All of them have components in that are designed to help us build a spiritual family, to get to know other followers of Jesus. Maybe a step for you would be just to, to sign up to get the newsletter. Easy, if you aren't doing that, we'll try it. Every week we send it out and it's got various things that are going on and maybe one of those will pop and be like, that's it, I wanna do that. Or or dads, you know, Teresa mentioned, hey, a couple things for Father's Day. Maybe the best gift that you can get for Father's Day would be this, to sign up for a men's group. Maybe if you're honest, you realize, you know, I don't really have other male friends. I could really use some, some, I could really use some community. Before you leave, just stop by the Welcome Center and we'd be happy to, to be able to find ways to help you get connected with that. Following Jesus is more than, it's more than a, a commitment to Jesus. It's also a commitment to his followers. Well, Luke chapter five. Jesus is popular. He could ask about anyone to join his team. He could have picked a scholar. He could have picked a rabbi. He could have picked an influencer. He could have picked at least somebody who was living a moral life. But he didn't do that. He picked Levi, the tax collector. And he said, Levi, follow me. And Levi did. Here's something that's kind of interesting about this passage in the Bible. Today, this guy Levi, we call him by a different name. Matthew. Matthew, the tax collector, wrote a book. Today, you can find his book. It's found in the Bible. We call it the Gospel According to Matthew. This narcissistic tax collector He spent time with Jesus. He left his immoral lifestyle. He made space in his life for Christian community and he has been influencing this world ever since. How cool is that? That's what following Jesus can do. Well, here's how the passage ends. Verse 30. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belong to their sect complained to his disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? The religious 
people, they saw what Jesus did. They saw he called Levi and they said, we don't like this. They criticized Jesus for doing this kind of thing. They criticized Jesus for hanging out with the riffraff. Jesus, you know how he responded to that? He didn't argue with them. He actually agreed with them. And then he said this, verse 31, Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. If you see a doctor surrounded by sick people, yeah, we wouldn't say, oh, what a horrible doctor. Right? We say, must be a good doctor. That's what good doctors do. They hang around sick people to make them better. Jesus, he tells us, well, he's the great doctor. So he hangs out with those of us who struggle, who struggle with sickness and sin to save us and to make us better. He heals us and he offers us the power to live in a new way. So let me close with this. To those of you today, to the bossy, to the greedy, to the grumpy, to the jealous, to the lazy, to the obnoxious, to the liars, to the cheaters, to the addicts, to the alcoholics, to the sexually immoral, to the materialistic, to the impulsive, and to whoever it is who left your dog poo in my yard yesterday. <laughs> you are welcome at the ridge because you are still loved by Jesus. Still are. And, and you'll fit right in. Because we're just a bunch of people who, who are prone to sin and to sickness. And hang out with Dr. Jesus. He heals us and he offers us the power to do life in a new way. His invitation, leave that booth. Whatever that booth is for you, leave it because his offer is different, his offer is better. The invitation of Jesus, leave that booth and come and follow me.